Hi folks, Rich here. Uh, if you don't know me, I am a novice guitarist who's had lots of guitars. This is guitar number 87, which is crazy, isn't it? And if you've watched any of my other videos, if you have, thank you, you'll know that I've had one of these before in this same colour. I did a review on it, gave my thoughts on it. And um, so I've now got another one. Why have I done that, you ask? Why have I done that? Good question. Now, I've had lots of guitars, as I just mentioned, and I'm a bit, I'm a bit OCD about certain things. The PRS SE Starla that I've done a few videos on, lovely guitar that it is. Well, or should I say was because I've now sold it. It's gone. Um, I just struggled to decide where it fitted in in life. You know, so you've got Stratocasters, Telecasters. Les Pauls, and you've got some pointy Ibanez things. You know, there's a sort of, a, there's a category of guitar types. Now, I appreciate that the Starla, you'd say, is a single cut. Well, obviously it is a single cut, but what is it? What is it? It's got a thinnish body, it's got a slightly funny shape. Mm, it's got the, it's got a blade switch, even though it's got two humbuckers. It's a coil tap. It's not a Les Paul copy. It's a, what is it? It just felt like I didn't know what it was. <laughs> it didn't fit in with life. Plus, I really don't like tortoise pit, pit guards. I really don't. They're my least favourite colour pit guard ever. And I know they're really popular, especially with white guitars. So there it was, sat in my uh, in my room on its stand, just staring at me, all tortoisey, and don't know what it wants to be. E. It's just uh, yeah. So I thought I c I just can't live with this. So as you know, I recently bought the. Squire Classic Vibe Strat, which I'm delighted with, and that ticks the, the Strat box. Um, actually, what's going on there? Yes, that ticks the Strat box for me. I've had Fenders in the past. I didn't feel the need necessarily to spend the money on that. And uh, yeah, very happy with it. So then I'm like, well, I, I still want something humbuckery. And uh, what can I do? Now, not wanting to spend a lot of cash, not having a lot of cash, in fact, right this very second, I thought, what can I do? Now, on eBay, I just had to, I just thought, I'll have a little look for Harley Benton's and vintage. I was going to get a vintage V100, having had one of those before, but um, they've gone up in value secondhand. That's kind of £200 really now. Well, I'm not saying it's not worth it, but yeah, they've got, kind of gone up. And then I saw this. Oh, the other thing is with the v, vintage V100, by the way, when you sit it on your lap like so, the weight of it does this. <laughs> Whoop! Doesn't sit on the lap very well. It's a bit of a weirdy. Whoop. Obviously, that's I'm a right-handed player. That's on my right leg. If you're someone who holds the guitar in the middle, it doesn't matter, I suppose. So anyway, sorry, waffling a bit now. So this came up, and I thought, now when I had my one of these, I wanted it to be a guitar to do everything. It's got a coil split on it and all that jazz. But as you'll see from the review, that's just not really the case. It's the single coil tone is okay, but you know it's not brilliant. This front. Uh, Pickup's a little bit muddy and the tone knob is basically on or off. But notwithstanding, it was a good price. I like the colour. Although, though interestingly, as is the way with these budget kind of guitars, the flame top on my previous one was nicer than this. It was definitely better. Um, this one's got a few minor imperfections. So did the other one. I'd say there's probably a few more minor imperfections on this one. Probably a B stock, but nothing disastrous. Talking of minor imperfections, when I had my Epiphone Modern Figured briefly, that had a bunch of uh, minor imperfections on it, I sent it back. Interesting that some people commented to say, you know, what do you expect for a guitar at that price point? Now, to me, a £550 guitar shouldn't have that many imperfections. And given that this Harley Benton has no, no more imperfections than that had, and it's, a, you know, like a third of the cost. So, so anyway, so... Now, the reason I can live with this and not the PRS Starler is because this is quite clearly a clone of an ESP Eclipse and a good clone. So this makes me think it has a place in life. It's a thing. It's not a it's not a one off weirdo. There's no tortoise involved. And it's um, yes, it, it is. It just does what it says on the tin. Hello, I'm copying an ESP Eclipse. Uh, and actually, as you see from my video before anyway, your belly cut on there, the body's not too thick. It's quite nice, comfortable to play these are. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's a nice guitar, really. Interestingly here, look, the roasted Jatoba fretboard. 
it's got a lot more sort of markings on it than than the one I had before. The guy who I bought this off has set it up himself with some new strings. He's wrapped the strings around the tailpiece. Just a bit, uh, yeah, don't know about that. Because if you could just about see at the back, I don't know if you can see that on there, but where are they, where he's bent them over, the strings have sort of split. I don't think they will break anytime soon. The only other thing is the action is so low, which is great because you hardly have to touch it. Um, but it's a bit too low on the uh, on the upper frets. There's a tiny bit of buzz, but nothing disastrous. Uh, but what I wanted to do is just show you the tone knob again, because they really are useless <laughs> on this particular guitar. The camera down a little bit, not that matters. Right, so here is Mr. Tone Knob. I've got them all the way up at the moment. In fact, let's take the uh, crunchy nonsense off. Tone all the way up. So that's as bright as you get on that neck pickup. Turn the tone halfway down. Oh, it sounds the same. And now it's so low, the volume has disappeared with it. So tone all the way up. Halfway. It is just another tone, another volume knob. Halfway up to the top. Just mud all the way. <laughs> um, bridge pickup, full tone, half tone, tone off. Barely any noise coming out the amp. Completely useless knob. <laughs> Yeah, that's with the coil split out on the, on the next pickup. All right, let's take the tone all the way off. Is that still coming through the amp? Hello. Just about halfway, all the way. But that doesn't matter because I haven't bought it for that purpose. I bought it because I need some humbucker goodness <laughs> in my life. And I figured this would wow, wow. demo or a review <laughs> really so that is why i bought another one of these and i'm not sad about it i like it actually now that i've come to terms with what it is for what it can and can't do i'm not disappointed that's uh, cost me 140 pounds used although you can barely tell it's been used and as you know if you're in the uk now trying to import from toman is a nightmare because you have to have uh, vat it's cost basically anything you get from toman now is roughly a third more add VAT and uh, import costs to it. So when I bought my original one of these, which is about eight months ago now, I think, it was £198 plus £8 shipping. 
they dropped the price of them quite a bit. I think about 160 now, but then you put your VAT back on and your shipping and your import costs and they're actually a bit more. So yes, yeah, 140 pounds. Uh, yes, that's it. The waffle is over. This is why I bought another SE Custom 2. Bye-bye.